and kind of talking about that, um, currently the only way to open a crate or use a crate is with a key that you need to buy from the store. And a lot of people have been kind of saying, and I know this goes back to the whole thing, we want problems, not solutions, but they've made suggestions like, oh, why don't you make them craftable? Because there are people that literally have pages and pages of just nothing but crates right. that have just been stockpiling. Yeah, um, providing people with something to do with crates if they, if they don't want to open them uh, is something we are working on. It probably won't be anything to do with keys, but it'll be something to do with crates if you are not interested in opening. I mean, there are so many, there are plenty of features in the game, um, and especially and plenty of them in the Manco store. The Manco store itself is one of them. That we fundamentally, our expectation is not that every customer is interested in them. You know, the, the different customers are interested in different things. I mean, you see that by the example you gave of how. You know, for some people, the thing they want to buy in the Manco store is the most expensive item. For some people, the thing they want to buy is the cheapest item. And for some people, they don't want to buy anything in the Manco store, and that's totally fine. So, uh, you know, the, the keys are interesting to some people, and now it's not our goal to try and make sure that everyone has to use them. Uh, we we set crate drops, we would, I and mean, we did our initial crate dropping set and the way we sort of tuned them has been to try and find a balance by where we felt like if you weren't someone who was ever going to own you know you you're never going to open crates for example uh we still we felt our hope was that you would still be able to get value for them right and that you could trade them off and there's a uh there's a bunch of sort of data analysis we're doing about what you know the right amount to tune that and so on right i've noticed that's kind of influenced some of the newer crates because some of the newer ones like the the current series, um, ten through twelve, is it? They have um, the Australian Christmas stuff yeah. built into them. Yeah. So just find, I mean, we're just sort of exploring there, I guess, to find out. Uh, you know, our data shows us there are different customers interested in different things, and we're just trying to provide them all with, uh, you know, something they're interested in, I guess. Right. Um, all right. So that's part one. And then, so starting off with part two, um, do you think hats slash new items have a major influence over the previously established art style? And I think the right way to think about this is the thing I said at the, right back at the start, which is that you know design is a, a thing about you know, design is about finding uh, you know, the right thing to do amidst a set of goals and constraints. And so the, uh, the goals we had for our art direction when we shipped didn't include anything involving character customization at all. Uh, and so you know, just adding that feature alone meant that our, our design should change, our art direction should change. Uh, and so it has. Um, you know, I think today our art direction is different because it's trying to do a set of different things that were never thought about when we did the initial art direction. It would have been nice to have known at that time when we designed that stuff that uh, this was going to, that we would do this later uh, and have that, you know, perhaps more holistically include, involved. But, uh, um, yeah, that's, it's nice to have hindsight. Right. And we don't have that luxury. So, yeah, I mean, our art direction has changed, absolutely, and it should have. Uh, yeah. Um, and how many... Approximately, how many community res, um, submissions have you received? Not so much avatars, but more weapons, hats, etc. Uh, thousands. And oh, um, so what criteria do you use to narrow those thousands down to <coughs> the three that get in for that one class? <laughs> I mean, right now the primary criteria is what can we actually get done. I mean, the problem is once you go through those, there are. If you say oh, we'll establish a quality bar, like you know, which we've done obviously of uh you know we're only going to use things that are above a certain quality the problem is there's still way more you know you're still in the hundreds um of items so our, our primary constraint right now is just uh the amount of time we have and the stuff that uh um you know and so w we have a set of things that we're thinking about like design additions um classes that need attention and stuff like that, problems that need addressing design-wise, and so we'll go and find items that solve some of those problems for us. Um, sometimes items come in that we see that we're just really excited about. You look at it and you're like, wow, that's just really, really cool. I really like that. I want to ship it. 
you know, what do we have that could, could we could associate with that. I think as a general rule across the board though, we're pretty bad at this part. I think this is a place where, I think the place, the thing we're worst at here is providing good feedback to the contributors themselves about why some items are selected and why their items aren't selected. Uh, and the, the primary problem right now is just one of volume. Like we can't even provide them all with feedback. So we have some, um, we're working on some stuff that'll get the community more involved in that and get feedback to the creators uh, sooner uh, and hopefully make that whole thing a, a lot more transparent. Okay. Um, what is your current stance on the amount of promotional items and how they work with TF2 style? So, I mean, there are a few different pieces to this. I may as well take this opportunity to answer because uh, I see a bunch of angst around these things. And, and Um, so one is the amount of promotional stuff we do. It's important to realize the promotional stuff in general is, is um, an incredibly small amount of work for us. Like, uh, to do an item, like uh, you know, a single promotional item or a couple of items, usually takes us a couple of days. Because um, if, it's, if it's an item that has no stats, it's just an asset uh, to build, and that's really cheap. And in a lot of cases, we can work with the, the, uh, the game we're collaborating with to have them send us raw source files or something like that that we then stylize. So that's the, that stuff's really cheap. Um, you know, all the promotional stuff we've done has been done while we've been doing all the other updates along the way. Uh, I think the to us, when we look around at like what we've done there and which ones are we most excited by, I think the ones that we would all point to would be the Shogun stuff. We're really happy with those items. We think that they visually fit TF style really nicely. Um, they were made by Rob Laro, who did the um, the, sol the soldiers uh, poly count pack with the black box and the um, and you know we we love Rob's work. We think he, he understands TF style really well. Uh, and we had and we spent probably as much time, if not more time, on the on the gameplay of those weapons and testing them as we did on any of the other updates, class updates we've done over the years. So. Um, you know, and the way that they're all, they're in the drop system, they're craftable, they're in the store, they're all just, they're just like, you know, if, if you weren't aware there was this product called Shogun, it'd look just like any other TF update, I think, and the, going forward, I think that's the sort of stuff we want. We want things that look a lot more like true collaborations between us, the, the other product we're working with, and the, the community itself. I think it's awesome to have community members creating these assets. Um, uh, you know, so uh, I guess that's the sort of stuff we'd like to do more. They take more work though, uh, because they're, you know, to us they are just like another update. We, we're going to do the design and implementation and playtesting on those items just like we would if they were an update, um, any other update. So probably be fewer of them, but they'll probably hopefully be higher quality. I think. Um, I, I guess there's one other thing I should point out, um, and. Early on, I think we, uh, you know, one of the processes, one of the things we were testing when we did promotional stuff was how far outside the TF2 art direction can we get before it starts to really look bad. Uh, I think we hit that point, and we're not going to go there again. Um, I think the the items, a couple of the items we've shipped in the past have been as far away from the TF art style as we want to go. And those items would be. I'm just, I'm just curious. Uh, I think the dangerous glasses would probably be out there. I think those uh, don't. Um, probably one of the most egregious things to pick one. Mm, yeah. I mean, it's tricky, right? The reality is, like, right now, after I've said that, there's a bunch of TF players who are all really unhappy at me. Because... Yeah, sorry. Oh, God. <laughs> I need to take this. Give me a sec. All right. Yeah. Yeah. So now I'm going to pause this, and when Robin comes back, I will resume. Sorry about that, folks. And if you heard, that was the Tom Bowie song. Um, so on the subject of the promo items, will there ever be, say, a Portal 2 one? Because I know we have the pin already that in the game. Is that going to be the promo item? I haven't seen anything about it. And well, yeah, we had, um, we're not ready to talk about the Portal 2 stuff yet.
Okay. Even though it's releasing in less than a month. So. Oh, there's plenty of time to do stuff. Well, yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Um, what was the idea behind paints like lime green, hot pink, or hats like um, Dr. Dapper's Topper or, say, the Brain Slug. I mean, the people, of course, who have been saying, oh, they don't fit the art style, they don't... Because I know on the Contribute site you have that little swatch, and yeah. people don't think that, say, pink or um, green fit there. Yeah, I mean, as I said, I mean, sort of already covered this, I guess, or a bunch of what I've said could be applied to this. To so, Some of this is about us testing our edges. Um, some of it is... Uh, the challenge of, you know, as I said about the like the color swatch is an interesting thing. The color swatch and that um, stuff there is fundamentally what we designed the original TF2 art direction with, uh, and it didn't it contain anything that would remotely allow for customization, and so we needed to expand beyond that. Um, yeah, it, customization is a, a tricky thing. Fundamentally, people care about stuff that allows them to look different to other people. Uh, and so if you lock it down too much, no one cares about any of it. Uh, you know, if I, if every, all the paints were, you know, had very little variance between them, no one would want to use them. So it's a, it's a, a challenge. Right. Um, and would you be willing to say, add something to me, and this is something, again, another solution to a problem, but they asked me, the community asked me to ask this, um, would you would be willing to add something that say disables hats or paint client side like everybody else can see the hats but the person who disabled the hats and paint can't see it would that be something we've talked possible? about it but uh, haven't come to any decision yet okay um, and I think you've already addressed this question which is do you feel the class are still distinguished enough with the new weapons hats and paint like because the soldier could heal himself so he didn't need a medic or something like that I mean people I think uh, um, yeah. I think our class roles are still distinct enough. Um, you know, there are other ways that people can heal themselves, for example, but no one's going to argue that they'll outdo a medic at this point. All right, the medic still has inherent advantages, uh, apart from the fact he heals much more than anyone else, and he has Uber and all this other stuff. Um, it, it, you know, I, I think that similarly, it's not like there's a, a version of the soldier or something that'll uh, be better than a scout is at what the scout does, for example. So. Uh, you know, it's that that's definitely something we worry about and something we pay attention to, but uh you know, I think any of the issues we have there today, to be honest, are probably ones we had when we shipped. Uh you know, the risk the the, the trickiness around cost balancing in in class games is much more around um generalists. Like the the challenge you have is finding the right balance between general applicability and specialist. So like the soldier and the demo are just very generally applicable classes, and so they're they're a pain to a pain to balance relative to the specialist classes. Uh, so and and also I, I don't share think weapons too, which can affect stuff. Yeah, that, but that hasn't. That's I guess what I'm saying is it hasn't really made it any harder, like that, or, or made it any worse than the the balance between those classes and the specialists when we shipped. Uh, yeah. All right, so that's end of part two. So now part three is, of course, what do you see for the future as TF2? And I understand this is going to be full of, oh, we can't discuss this, but... <laughs> no, yeah, it wouldn't be that. It, we'd but, discuss but that. It, it, but it's, it's full of, just, I don't know. I mean, yeah, like just, we don't, I didn't think we... As a general, we try not to plan too far ahead because our goal was to react to customers. Uh, we build things like replay. You know, it's like ask me, what do you think replay will be in six months? And it's like I don't really know. I mean, we have ideas for what we could, you know, as we work on it, we come up with ideas for other ways we could improve it. But those are just ideas, right? The cust commu customers are going to come up with their ideas uh, as they play with it, and they're going to run into problems with it, and they're going to use it in some way. I'm sorry. Yep. Oh, yeah. Okay. Sorry about that. Yet another Tom Bowie phone call.